Jason Clark was born in Sarnia, Ontario. I was thrilled to discover that. He lives with his wife Karen and their three children in North Carolina. Now you've got to get the names of the children because they really express my guest's passion. Are you ready for this? Madeline True, Ethan Wild with an E, and Eva Blaze. Okay, here's the trailblazer. <laughs> I am so loving your theme, your book, and your God story. Jason Clark, surrendered and untamed. I'm holding the field guide for the vagabond believer. <laughs> yeah. So guess Thank what I had you. to do? I had to check out the word vagabond. Yeah. And um, it has a little bit of a negative side. It can, yeah. Drifter. <laughs> That's not the part you were emphasizing. I felt that, but no, that wasn't, that wasn't the part I was emphasizing, though. No. You're looking for the adventure. That's right, yeah. 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 A faith journey, right? This great journey started with a dream. And I know people are going to be encouraged because in the plan of God, that usually has to get crushed out of you first, doesn't it? Oh, it's been you have my to lay it down. Yeah, yeah, that's what surrender is. That's what I've experienced as far as surrender. That's what the surrender came from. The whole project actually started um, from a death, right? There was a cross experience in my life where where uh, I had been in a band for years, and that had been my dream and my passion, and what I felt like God had given me, actually. And, and then all of a sudden, I found myself through circumstances that um, I couldn't control uh, at the end of, really, at a cross situation in life. And, and out of that, uh, I, I learned that to, 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 to grab what God has for me, I have to give it back. Mm. And that's what surrender was. It was saying, I'm going to agree with the nature of God. I'm going to see him and begin to agree with how he sees me and actually handed everything back. And that was the beginning, the birthplace of, of the journey that's kind of birthed the book and, and the rest of it. Now, your, your singing career was, was really on a roll. The band Fringe, you did three CDs? Yeah, yeah. And was it the fourth one then that the distribution deal fell apart? It was the third one. Yeah, it was, it it was, was that. the third yeah, one. Yeah, it was I the third it one. Was. Yeah, yeah. And, and that was bigger than a disappointment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was seven years. And it, was, it wasn't just seven years of, of, um, of working on something. It was seven years of this is what I believe God had given us. And so it was one of those things where you're like, Lord, you know, that real disillusionment of Did I hear you wrong? Yeah, did we, it was exactly. It wasn't just, it wasn't just a, a dream that died. It was, did I miss God on this thing? Somehow did, did I miss him? And, uh, and now you were a family man. I was, At that yeah, point, yeah, you, yeah. you got a family to feed, and yeah. and uh, just a little interesting sidebar. You seem to have a a history of um, finding your spouse at the same place for generations. <laughs> yeah, we were joking about it a little bit. I went to uh, a school in Western New York called Elam. My grandparents went there. Uh, my parents went there, and then I met my wife there. They all, everybody's met there, and so the joke, of course, is that my kids won't go there till they're past their 30s, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's the, uh, but uh, it's a good place. Elam's a good place. It was a great place uh, to encounter God and to meet a spouse, right? Very good. But, and you kept the music alive, mm -hmm. worship leading for yeah. two slices of that seven years. Yeah. And then you worked with a missions organization. Yeah, yeah. That missions organization, uh, we, we moved to Charlotte to be a part of that. That's where we are now. And, uh, and really, that was the, where the journey began. I just finished the Surrendered and Untamed album, and then we moved to Charlotte. And, uh, and got to really, God took us on the journey into his love. Well, you know, where, you, where he gives you, um, you know, you get a word from him, you get some sort of word or a prophetic word or something, and, he, and, and you're excited, and you're, you know, okay, we've got new direction, we've got, and then he takes you on that journey into his love and into discovering what it was. And, you know, I have uh, two favorite quotes. I keep them where I can see them. Yeah. One is A.W. Tozer. It is doubtful whether God can bless a man greatly until he has hurt him deeply. Yeah. And the other one is Alan Redpath. It's the same message. When God wants to do an impossible task, he takes an impossible man and crushes him. <laughs> Are you feeling better? <laughs> yeah, I'm feeling better. Thank you. <laughs> This is, uh, it is he, the yeah. broken dream. I mean, the, the, the biblical examples of Joseph, and Moses, yeah. and yeah. even Abraham, yeah. you know? Yeah. 25 year wait for that son of promise. Yeah, it is. It's, um, th it's been an incredible journey um, where I've, I've really, it's a journey of, into his love, into the Father's love. That's, if I could say it that any other way, that's what I've discovered. You know, surrendered and untamed, what I've discovered is, is to live surrendered 
is to give everything back, is to say, my promise, the thing that you gave me, the DNA, all that you've made, I give it back to you now, and I put it back in your hands, and I align myself with your nature. I say, okay, yes to who you are, and yes to how you see me, and then I'm set free to live radically untamed, passionately pursuing. Any thought that comes in there now is, is grounded and surrendered uh, with the Father, and so then it's this journey of, of uh, living radically and wildly untamed, and that's really the last seven years has been that. It's been, it's been one story after another of his faithfulness, his goodness, as I've come into, you know, it wasn't, uh, uh, it, it wasn't um, a, a, an easy journey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there has been some crushed moments. At the same time, I, I, learning that that wasn't the Father's heart for me, the Father's heart for me, was that I would know more of his love, that it would become sure in his love. That's the bottom line. That's the bottom line. It's building trust. Yeah. So that he can take you anywhere. Amen. Yeah. How long did that take to move from at least deep disappointment yeah. to, okay, God, I don't know what's going on, but I'm with you and I trust you? Yeah. Well, for me, um, the disappointment is hurtled when I've, when I've become convinced that he loves me, that he's love. Uh, it's, it's actually, um, well, to answer the question, it's been, uh, you know, a lifetime journey. Mm -hmm. But in the last probably seven years, in the last couple of years, I've come into an understanding that I exist to become sure in His love. That's, mm. that's why I'm on the planet. I'm, con I'm convinced that all of us exist to become sure in our Father's love. And that's what faith is. I say in the book that faith is spelled R-A-S-K. And this book really is the faith, the risk aspect mm -hmm. of the journey. Mm -hmm. But you've said it, risk is, ba is, is grounded in trust. And they really don't, they don't, they don't work without each other. You, you can only risk to the extent that you trust, and trust is all about knowing He loves me. It's all about becoming convinced in His love, in His goodness, His always good love, even in those moments when the circumstances uh, and the evidence is piled up against you. I've learned that the evidence uh, uh, in my life, when He comes through with a need met, uh, it's the evidence of his goodness. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? That you believed already. Yes. You already trusted. I, I love, you've got lyrics, uh, music lyrics, yes. uh, all through the book. <laughs> no risk without danger, no faith if I'm sure. Yeah. I'm not, but I'm absolutely positive in the way I'll live surrendered and untamed, whole and insane. <laughs> you gotta be a little bit you do. living on the edge. You do, yeah, you do. Now this story, takes a marvelous, unexpected turn when your brother is pursuing his vision yeah. and makes you part of it. Yeah. Well, I'd written the album out of that death season and it had life on it. And I really, all I did was I gave it, at that point I gave music back to God and the album really didn't even get put together. It was, it was mixed and produced, but, but uh, hadn't been manufactured, and I just went ahead and put it on the shelf. But my brother came to me and said, Jason, there's life on this, this album, this message. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'm on my way, my brother's a filmmaker, and he said, I'm on my way to the South Pole to film a friend of mine, Alex Harris. He's a well-known South African explorer, summit at Everest, and is uh, quite, quite a radical guy. And he, and he said, I'm on my way to the South Pole to film this. And he said, I, I feel like you're supposed to, we're supposed to take your music, the message, and we're supposed to grab this radical uh, story, and there's, there's a connection there. And while I, it was actually, we were in the room, and he said, I think you're supposed to write a book for it. Now, that was the last thing. I'd been writing a little bit, some articles for the missions organization I was a part of, but I had never thought of that. And I was in a season, I sat back on the couch and I, and I said, Lord, I don't want to do anything that you're not blessing. I, we were, I was in that season, you know, you, you've, you're at that cross spot and it's that, Lord, I, don't, I just don't want to touch anything that, isn't, that you don't have favor on. And so I sat back, my, my wife and, and Joel were, were having a conversation, my brother, and, and they'd come, I sat back and I said, God, do you want me to write a book? And immediately felt his presence fall and I just started laughing. I thought that's the craziest thing in the world. Uh, but I started laughing so loud that uh, they stopped the conversation, looked over and said, uh, what's going on over there? And I just responded, yeah, I'll, I'll write a book. And, uh, and then, and then I learned. That was a burning bush moment. That was a burning bush moment. Yeah, definitely. Not the only one. And you know, yeah, I needed that because I, I spent five years uh, writing. I didn't know how to write a book, so I learned how to do it by doing it and trusting and, and through all the other see all the other stuff that was going on in life. And L let and, me uh, clarify, this book. This book took yes. five years. It did to write. It did. It did. And you were encouraged to write boldly. Yeah, yeah. And you did. I your Lord heart, willing, yeah. Your heart and soul is in. <laughs> Every page. Yeah, it is. And then what did your brother do? I mean, this has become quite a package. It's fun to see what God does, you know. He's so good, too. He's just good getting better. 
<laughs> you know, and uh, and 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 I'm com that's. You know, I wrote and I was faithful and we we went through some, you know, when you go through one cross season, it doesn't mean that you're not, you're not going into another. And when you kill one giant, it doesn't mean that there isn't another. But the giant you killed uh, one time is the faith story for the next one, right? Mm 